In this video, we'll talk about the process of gastrulation in frogs. Especially, we would look at the morphogenetic movements during the frog gastrulation. So, what really happens during the frog gastrulation? During gastrulation, the cells of blastula are given new positions, they got new neighbors, and they form a multicellular body plan. Now, this is a common theme in any kind of gastrulation where one layer of cells eventually give rise, uh, give rise to multiple layers which forms ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. Now, there are characteristic morphogenetic movements which we have discussed in earlier videos like invagination, ingression, involution, delamination, and epiboly. All of these morphogenetic movements are really essential during gastrulation. These are common themes. If you want to learn details about these, click on the video in the i button. But in this video, we would try to appreciate where and when these kind of basic morphogenetic movement happens during the frog gastrulation. So if we cut a long story short, this is how the frog gastrulation would look like. In this particular diagram, the red represents ectoderm, blue represents mesoderm, and yellow represents endoderm. So during the process of frog gastrulation, first, the goal is to bring the endodermal organs or the cells that give rise to endoderm inside of the embryo, which is currently outside in the blastos uh, blastosis stage. Now then we have to surround the embryo with a sheath of ectoderm. And finally, the challenge is to place the mesoderm cells in between the ectoderm and endoderm. So overall, this tells us that there is a reorganization of these germ layers during the process of gastrulation. So obviously, we have to appreciate the morphogenetic movement that give rise to this kind of reorganization. So this is the starting point. You can see this uh, particular blastula of the xenopus. The vegetal pole and the animal pole is depicted like this and the cavity is known as blastocele. So each three color represent different layers, mesoderm, ectoderm and endoderm, which are defined, defined earlier. Now, first of all, there are cells known as bottle cells and these cells invaginate through the blastopore. So the first movement that happens during the process of frog gastrulation is invagination. So these bottle cells has a kind of like bottle like neck that protrudes towards the surface. And these bottle cells are really important to understand the overall process of gastrulation. The bottle cells move inside and forms a narrow canal like situation. Anyway, in this particular diagram, you can appreciate how the ectoderm is uh, shown here. Then the mesoderm can further be divided into corda mesoderm and head mesoderm. So both of these form together the involuting marginal zone because the second movement we are talking about is the involution. Remember, involution means sliding one sheath of cells below the another. So follow the arrow to understand how these cells of mesoderm would eventually involute and grow slowly just beneath the ectodermal layer. So let us follow the movement of these blue cells. While these blue cells are moving beneath the red cells, the red cells are undergoing the process of epiboly. Epiboly is a movement by which the entire embryo would be surrounded by these ectodermal cells. So two simultaneous movement is going on whose result is somewhat like this. So again, we can see the dorsal lip here. This arrow suggests the direction of involution movement of the mesoderm tissue or IMZ tissue. And the outer arrow shows the direction of epiboly. So involution and epiboly are two important movement that are happening during the frog gastrulation. Epiboly is occurring in the ectodermal cells and IMZ or the mesodermal cells are actually involuting. So these are two appreciable morphogenetic movements that are nicely trackable. If one put a dye in these path of these moving cells, eventually one can track the movement by tracking the dye. 
So overall, we learned how uh, different layers get arranged during the formation of frog uh, gastrula. And you can see the internal dark yellow cavity that is known as archenteron because blastocele is now kind of shrunken and it is removed. Now archenteron is the new cavity which is surrounded by the endoderm and archenteron is the primitive gut. Eventually it would give rise to the alimentary canal of these tadpoles. So overall we looked at the process of um, gastrulation. We appreciated the movements like epiboli and we appreciated the movements like involution that happens during this process. So I hope this was short and useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Please follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Support our channel using super thanks. See you in next video.